Hello and welcome to the dojo. Today I'm going to take you on my two week journey that take me from having absolutely zero experience with FDM printing to being able to print the basic structure of a 1 to 24 scale diorama for my Porsche 911 turbo build. In this video I'm going to share with you my mistakes that I did during this process and the ways that I overcame them. So you don't have to do them yourself. I created this 3D model of the diorama in Fusion 360 with the intention to dial in the composition and then use the blueprints as guides for my hot wire cutter. This was the plan until I received an email with an offer to test one FDM printer, the longer LK5 Pro. With its 300 by 300 mm print bed and a 400 mm Z axis, it is perfectly sized to print this 1 to 24 scale diorama in one go if that's what I wanted to do, but more on that a little bit later. So first things first, the printer came in a low profile package, but as I opened the box it was obvious that the machine comes mostly assembled. In fact. According to the manufacturer, it comes at about 90% assembled and the user has to bolt on only a few of the larger items to complete the machine. The assembly manual explains exactly what needs to be done. The tools are included and all the bolts are clearly labeled, so assembly is not hard at all. The structure of the printer is all metal and the quality seems rather good. It is equipped with two support braces that connect the gantry with the base and offer adjustability so that you can set the gantry to be perfectly perpendicular to the base. This feature solves the Z-wobble issue that is a problem for many machines. As I said earlier, this is a large volume printer and on top of that it is on the affordable side of things, which is rare and you can get it with $30 discount using the link in the description and applying this code on checkout. The print bed is heated and it has a ceramic coated glass on top of the aluminum plate. This makes the removal of the parts easier once the bed cools down. The printer reads your 3D files from micro SD card which is included in the kit. The 4.3 inch color touchscreen is the control unit of the printer. The user interface is easy to navigate and offers a lot of on the fly adjustments. The open source motherboard is combined with three ultra silent motors for quiet printing. Take a listen. Being open source means that it is easier to add more equipment like auto leveling. After completing the bed leveling procedure, I went ahead for the first print. This is a calibration cube and it is made with the purpose of testing the accuracy of your printer. This cube has 20mm sides and it should print this way. If not, there are calibration procedures to fix the issue. Fortunately enough, the dimensional accuracy of my printer is spot on. To test something a little bit bigger and meaningful for the hobby, I downloaded this paint jar opener from Thingiverse and printed it. In hindsight, I should have printed it solid, but more on that a little bit later. The fact of the matter is, it works. It was time to start printing the diorama pieces. The bed is large enough to get everything printed at once, but the printing time was so long it meant I had to leave it overnight, which is not a problem, but should something happen, like the part detaching from the bed, I would have to throw a lot of material. So I chose to print it in sections and first I did the garage roof. It is a simple part and printed nicely without modifications to the slicing settings. I got confident and loaded the garage section in the slicer, 
where I decided to save material and time by increasing the layer height, orienting the detail so I can minimize the supports and reducing the infill to a minimum. It printed, but there were a lot of lessons to be learned from it. First, a lot can be done to improve the 3D design so that the most visible parts of your print will end up either facing the bed or being perpendicular to it. If it is at an angle, the quality ain't gonna be very good. To address this issue, I redesigned the house section into three pieces, each facing the bed, to get the best possible surface quality. Second, and in direct correlation with the first one, it is not advisable to have the layer height larger than half of your nozzle diameter. The plastic cannot be squished well enough, which leads to layer adhesion issues. The third thing that I learned is that it needs patience. There is no point endlessly tweaking the slicer settings to knock off 10% of the print time. In my opinion, it is best to find the most fail-safe settings and leave the machine to do its job. After everything printed, I was very happy with the result. This does not mean everything is perfect, but it is good enough and now I know what needs attention. One of the things that I would like to change in the future is the way that I do the tolerances on the assemblies because I really don't want to use tools like this one. If you want smooth surface finish, with FDM printing, post-processing is inevitable, at least as far as I know. If you are to do a brick link or some other overlay, you are good to go as the parts come off of the printer. I however want to have some stucco style finish, so I needed smooth facades. The rest will be covered, so I ain't gonna touch it. So first I sanded down the plastic a little bit. For the entire process I used 220 grit sandpaper, but if I had 120 at hand it would have been much faster. Then using a spatula I spread some Tamiya basic type putty over the entire facade surface. To capture some of the sanding dust from the putty sanding I used a tray and wet paper towels. If you can I would advise you to do such jobs outside. All I am aiming to achieve in this step is to hide the print lines. I don't need the surface to be super smooth, just leveled. With the sanding out of the way I started applying the stucco finish. I haven't done this before so some experimenting with the technique was due. First I started applying the Mr. Surfacer 500 with a sponge, dabbing it until it starts to cure. This filler primer wants to level itself so to achieve the desired effect it is important not to let it do its thing. One negative side of the sponge application is that when the surfacer becomes sticky it can actually tear off some parts of the sponge. So I was very careful to remove such pieces from the surface before it is too late. On the garage facade I switched to application with an old brush. It is definitely more controllable this way and unless you use very bad quality brush there is no risk of pieces of it to stick to the surface. Also, the brush can be reused, although it does not look like that. A quick butt in acetone and it is ready for more stucco application. On the downside, the brush application method does not provide as good of a texture as the sponge. With the surface texture effects completed and cured, I went ahead to assemble the house parts together. This will help with the handling when I paint the facade. For the assembly, I used CA glue but having CA glue activator will have been beneficial. Unfortunately, my can turned out to be empty. For the paint, I will also test a new thing out. I found some acrylic animal paints in my local hobby shop and they had some nice pastel colors. Now, I have no idea what on earth acrylic animal is, but there we have it, Dahlia yellow applied with a brush. To be fair, the paint goes down very nicely, no evident brush marks even though I apply it without any thinning. On the other hand, coverage is meh and on top of that the label calls for about 4 hours between layers. 
the brush gets easily cleaned with water and the paint gets nicely diluted with water. So here comes the airbrush. The coverage is still meh but at least I can do the next layer in about 15 minutes. The paint should get a matte finish once it cures but it does not. So I will have to apply a flat or satin varnish. That and a lot more will come in future videos. If you want to stay up to date with my builds consider becoming a member of the channel. Tiers Advanced and Master get daily updates and every tier gets early access to my videos and on top of that free of ads. For more information on the tiers click the join button under this video. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy modeling fellas!